getting all earthy today. Uh, why? It is Earth Day. So we're getting earthy. And we're, set, we're focusing on the Earth. That's what we're doing here today. Uh, we're talking plastics. We're talking initiatives to limit the amount of plastics we are using. Uh, and we're asking you what you are up to as well. How are we doing it? With a number of guests. Got a number of special guests joining us. Now, this is that moment, isn't it? When I sit here and the man there alongside me sits there and I sort of go, God, I could have done more with my life, couldn't I, eh? Because whilst, yeah, I get the privilege of sitting on this sofa every night, I haven't rowed across an ocean, but he has. He is, of course, uh, one of the members uh, of the, uh, the Arabian Ocean rowing team. And since then, he has founded the Plastic Pledge. We're going to find out much more about it all, but it's a warm welcome to Toby Gregory. Tobes, good to see you as always. Lovely to see you. How are you keeping? Very well indeed. Now, you don't need to tell me about your... Uh, rowing prowess uh, and of course the team's in the extraordinary achievements but you might have to tell a few people out there that don't know about it so tell us about the Arabian Ocean rowing team and what you guys did yes yeah, certainly so in, in short we rowed across uh, the Atlantic Ocean I've heard of it I've heard of it yeah and uh, Big we, body of water. it's a small body of water about five miles deep a tiny bit long about 5,000 <laughs> kilometers um, and uh, many years ago I stumbled across a number of things that led to a journey combined with the UN Environment Programme that meant we, we made the decision to try and row across the Atlantic Ocean. Wow, um, we can see it as well over there. So it, it, it took us 42 days. As you can see, the boat's not particularly long. It's roughly the size of a car that you probably came here in today. Um, but most importantly, we used the crossing and the global media attention it received to campaign against plastic pollution. Now, we often talk about plastic being the enemy. I don't think plastic's necessarily the enemy. It's what we do with it that is. And really, you know, for the ocean, 60% of the, the pollution in the ocean is made up of plastic. Wow. So it's an extraordinary figure. So we really, we use the road to raise awareness about that. And then I set up the plastic pledge off the back of it. Mm. Can you tell us more about the plastic pledge since you brought it up right now? Yes, yeah, certainly. So it's just a clear and transparent commitment that schools, businesses and organisations make mm -hmm. to do something towards their use of plastic. Using plastic is unavoidable. It's part of our everyday life and it's an important part of life. Yeah. But it's more what do you do with it? You know, are there alternatives? Can you reuse? Can you recycle? What are the options? Only 6% of plastic globally is recycled. So there's a huge opportunity here. So what do you encourage people to do with their plastic at home? Start by using less of it. Where oh, possible. Build a boat. That's it. Make a boat. <laughs> Take me across the Atlantic. It wouldn't have lasted very long. We've faced some storms. But no, in, in, in short, primarily reduce or recycle. You know, where possible. The, the UAE and the whole region is really embracing this. We've seen the bans. And now there are opportunities. Can we buy different project, uh, products or can we recycle somewhere? And there are many companies across it that offer that alternative. What you and your team achieved across um, uh, the ocean, and we're going to talk about the future challenge in just a few moments' time. But again, if it comes down to sort of personal choices, I mean, there are those. You could have sat there and just gone, you know what? I'm not going to buy a plastic bag from the supermarket every single day. I'm going to take my own bag. But you went, no, I'm going to put a team together. I'm going to get a, a sponsorship. I'm going to uh, get this and become an initiative and do something that catches the headlines. Is that what makes people change their opinions to plastics? I think when it comes to behavioural change generally, it's about inspiring. Yeah. You know, you can tell people what to do, but nobody wants to hear that. Yeah. You know, if that worked, there would be no problem. But I think if you inspire, if you look forward, if you provide a solution, if you lead people in that direction, well, they, they, they're intrigued, yeah. they're engaged. I've got over 60 schools across the UAE, across the region who want to be part of this project. And that's literally because we rode across the ocean. So I take the boat there, I talk about our adventure, but then I also talk about what I saw. You know, we saw whales, dolphins, we had sharks, but there was also an awful lot of plastic. So you still have the boat? I still got the boat, yep, yep. It survived the flood. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually pretty useful. I should have charged, taken it to the airport. Well, you've been talking about inspiring, and you know what's also inspiring is how you were non-stop from rowing across the Atlantic, starting out the Plastic Pledge, and now I know there's another challenge that's coming up. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, indeed. Look, we've had a tremendous response to the Plastic Pledge, but I'm also always looking ahead. You know, what's next? How can we continue to inspire and engage? And the Arctic is one of the most precious places on the planet, and it's changing six times faster than the rest of the world. There's also plastic pollution up there. It actually snows plastic now, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So as a consequence, uh, we'll be one of the first people in the world to actually take my ocean rowing boat up to the northern part of Norway, set wow. off from there, pointing it north, and, and heading towards the Arctic. Um, not just us, but for the first time ever, there'll be a new team and we'll actually be taking a female on the team. So she'll be the first ever female to row 
open Arctic waters, which seems rather incredible to me. Um, but this isn't just now about plastic, it's also a wider message. Is this the moment you now tell us that it's Mars? <laughs> yeah, well, welcome, Mars. <laughs> I'd love welcome that. Mars. Thanks. <laughs> Looks great, <Right>. yeah. <laughs> what do you expect to see out there? Um, well, hopefully a few less sharks and a few <laughs> less storms. Um, but really, sadly, we're going to see pollution. We are going to see plastic. And I think when people follow the journey, and it's quite captivating, and we're showing them what we're seeing, as particularly the pollution, they're quite concerned by it. They, you know, how does pollution get this far north? You know, I've got a real problem getting satellite connection because it's so far north. Mm. Yeah, I can get the pollution there. So it's quite extraordinary. The journey itself won't be as long. It will probably take about 25 or 30 days. However, um, it's, it's fairly treacherous, and there's been an awful lot of planning. It's, it's, the planning started pretty much as soon as I got back from the Atlantic. Mm. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I it's just... It's to... cold, isn't it? Well, the really interesting thing is, so I'm working with the Norwegian government, who have been amazing, their Innovation Norway, but they tell me and their specialists, we could have thick snow, or we could have bright sunshine. We really just don't know what it's going to be. And we could have, when we set off initially out of a place called Tromso, there's something called the Devil's Dance Floor that we've got to cross initially. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, which we're particularly excited by, as you can imagine, <laughs> such an open Sounds boat. Um, but yeah, so it's, it, it's going to be a once in a lifetime adventure. It is. And, you know, outside of plastic, I hope this inspires people to take on challenges of their own. We're almost out of time. When is it, very quickly? Uh, July the 28th. Okay, and people want to find out more about it and follow you? Uh, the Plastic Pledge on Instagram or the Arabian Ocean Rowing Team on Instagram. Oh. Well, perfect. Thank you so much Toby that was very inspiring and it's great having you with us in the studio thank you so much so now today's spotlight is on a platform curating impactful eco-friendly products in Dubai delivering high quality solutions to kickstart your green journey this is Namarta from shift eco hi I'm Namrata I'm the co-founder of Shift Eco. Shift Eco is a platform for honest, vetted, eco-friendly products. Our mission is to make sustainable living easy, and we do that by giving access to sustainable products and also by providing knowledge and information about sustainable living. We work with both consumers as well as companies, helping them to go green. Uh, sustainable living is perceived as cumbersome and difficult by consumers. This is because a lot of consumers believe that getting access to sustainable products is difficult. They don't know where to go if they're looking for sustainable options. Additionally, a lot of these products are more expensive and consumers don't understand why this high price point is there. Lastly, they view the space as daunting and they feel like they'll have to change everything around. That's where Shiftico comes in, helping you get access to sustainable products, making this easy for you. And as we say, we encourage people to make small shifts in their daily lifestyle that go a long way. So the long-term goal for Shiftico is to build a conscious community, not only in the UAE, but across the GCC. We want to do this by working with large companies, helping them embed sustainability in their culture, and by helping end consumers get access to sustainable products and by truly living a sustainable lifestyle. Dubai is a perfect melting pot of cultures. There's a lot to learn from people in Dubai. Uh, as a city, it's a very dynamic city. Uh, there is a lot of ease of doing business in the UAE and because it's such a futuristic city, it's a perfect place to work. <music> Dubai means home to me. Uh, I absolutely love living in Dubai. I uh, love the fact that it's so proximate to my home country, India, and uh, it feels like home. team from Shift Eco for giving us some, um, well, everyday solutions, some sustainable solutions to kickstart your green journey. Okay, from the green journey uh, to what is hot out there on the roundup, 
Louie, it's over to you. <laughs> well, this is exciting for me. I hope you guys find it exciting too. Bloom Spoon is an eco-conscious startup that's based right here in Dubai and has established the world's first plantable cutlery that sprouts seeds once planted. After a meal, users can plant the utensils in damp soil at any angle with seeds sprouting after 15 to 20 days only. The startup has also created cork grow kits, terracotta grow kits, plantable pencils, and bamboo toothbrushes to contribute to a more sustainable world. Wow. How exciting is this? Would you actually try utensils that would actually end up growing plants? You're going to put it in your Add mouth. It to your garden, you know. <laughs> the chair, you'd have it all over your house. You'd yeah. just be planting everything all over every time you have a meal. The pot with a fork in it. <laughs> but how do you feel about these biodegradable alternatives versus plastic when it comes to cutlery? I mean, I think they're a great uh, solution. Um, from what I understand, they do need to be composted and, and dealt with in the right way still. So you can't just continue to throw things into the landfill. Um, but, you know, if, to have that circular economy that I was talking about and things, you know, going back into the land and um, not like, ending up as, as waste in our environment, then it's a great solution. Do we have that here? Do we have a special bin for compostable products or is it just recyclable? There are some companies that do this that have um, composting services, um, but I think it's, there really needs to be more um, because, you know, in most buildings, that's, there's not an option for that. Hang on. It says here, you plant it after every single meal. <laughs> yes, because it's single use. I mean, you're going to need acres <laughs> of, of ground or something like that, because if it, three meals a day, that's like, it's like three you just run them plants, everywhere in every you know, single plant. Before box. you know it, you are, you're living in a garden full of vegetables. But isn't that exciting? <laughs> I love it. To a certain extent. You know what? Like, I understand it's great for the environment, but like having it at home everywhere, I mean, it would be still like use challenging. Metal. <laughs> yeah, you just use don't metal. have to use compostable ones every time. Oh, not every time. time. <laughs> okay, right. I thought it was a commitment to go that, the other way. Yes. <laughs> yes, we still have a lot to talk about. But next up, we're exploring eco friendly alternatives in the FB industry with the co founder of Palmade Biodegradable Products. Plus, we've got a very special performance ending us on today's episode, so don't go anywhere.